Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining today. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can solve the structure of a protein using cryo-EM. So I will start with uh, sample preparation. So first of all in cryo-EM we visualize the a sample on something called an EM grid. So it's basically uh, like a circle with a mesh of copper in it and it also has a carbon coating with tiny pores in it. Uh, what we do is we add the protein sample onto the uh, EM grid and then once you add it to the EM grid then you vitrify the sample in liquid ethane. Now uh, the idea of vitrification is that we can preserve the sample in a glass-like state which is very important in cryo-EM because we need to minimize the formation of ice uh, because ice crystals can damage or um, denature your protein. That's, that's why we use liquid ethane to kind of vitrify water molecules. So after vitrification uh, you get this sort of glass-like state in which your protein molecules are in all the different orientations. You can imagine, right, um, with in solution the molecules are in different orientation, therefore once you vitrify you get the particles in different orientations. After vitrification, you go on to use a, tran a transmission electron microscope to image your sample. So uh, this is an example of a cryo-EM um, micrograph. So the images captured using a term is, is referred to as a micrograph. And uh, these protein particles that you can see in these micrographs uh, have shown a particle with an arrow here. So this is what these particles usually look like. So I have to specify that in cryo-EM we don't capture still images anymore, instead we capture movies. The idea is that when the electron beam hits the sample, it can cause specimen movement uh, within the vitrified sample. As a result, uh, we can get blurred images. In order to avoid that, what uh, we currently do is that we capture a series of images, which is what we call movies. There are softwares which can combine all of the multiple images into a single image which can kind of remove any blur which has happened to the sample and we can get a more sharper image. Now we will have multiple movies like this. We can have hundreds of thousands of micrographs uh, and each of this single micrograph will be in the form of a movie. So once we have all of these uh, images which are captured as movies and uh, aligned, then we can move on to the next step, which is uh, particle picking and 2D classification. So in cryo-EM, we have these micrographs and we have particles in different orientations. For example, we have a star-shaped particle here. This is a front view of the particle and we can say there's a side view of the particle and different views of the same particle. And uh, what we do next after capturing the images is that uh, we do something called particle picking, wherein you uh, pick out in these individual particles, we box them out and we individually pick all of the different particles we see in the micrograph and then we classify them. It's also call, called 2D classification. So in 2D classification what happens is that similar uh, images are grouped together as you can see this particular view of the particle is grouped together, there's another side view of the particle which is grouped together and all of these different orientations of the particles or different views of the particles are grouped uh, together and then uh, what software does is it will do a uh, an alignment of all these particles within the group. After alignment from the software, you'll get these 2D classes. Now essentially what these 2D classes are, are just a group of picture, right? In this particular class has all of these images, which are the same view of the particle, particle in a specific orientation. This is another view of the particle, the particle in another orientation, right? Now we can take all of these 2D classes and we can use it for uh, 3D reconstruction. Now this is done using by making use of the projection theorem. So how 3D reconstructions work is that uh, simply we have a 3D object, right? In our case it's a protein. Let's say we have a protein inside a box. That's what we see here. And we can use STEM or transmission electron microscope to get a 2D image of a protein which is in a box here, right? Here you see a top view from here. Uh, we can see a top view, a square, and this thing here. That's what um, we see here. 
and this is called a 2D projection or a 2D image, right? Now we, like I already mentioned, we can capture images in different orientation. It could be in this orientation, we can ca capture an image that, and it could be in this orientation, and we can capture multiple images like this. And once we have all of these different images, then we can calculate a 2D Fourier transformation of all of these images, all of the micrographs we have collected during data collection. And we can get all of these micrographs into Fourier space. So once you do a 2D Fourier transformation of all your micrographs, uh, what you should uh, know is that 2D transformation of each of these micrograph is basically a central slice through the 3D object. Right? You can basically fit each of the a 2D Fourier transformation of each of the micrographs in the 3D object. And we can take the 2D transformation of all the multiple micrographs and put them together in a reciprocal space into a 3D object. That's what we are seeing here. And then we can do an inverse Fourier transformation of this um, 3D Fourier transformation of the object. And we will get back the 3D object. That's how we do a 3D rec reconstruction. Uh, in simpler terms, um, it's the same thing, just explained in a different way. We have different micrographs here. You can see the micrograph showing different orientations of the particle. And what essentially this is showing is that you can use each of the information in these uh, different micrographs because you can, see, you can imagine each of this micrograph is basically giving us uh, an image of the electron density uh, of this particular particle, right? So now we can combine all of the images in Fourier space or reciprocal space and uh, we can back project it onto the 3D object and we can get a 3D reconstruction of the object. We can use this uh, 3D reconstruction of the object to build our atomic model using softwares like Chimera uh, or Coot and uh, that's how we solve the structure of a protein using cryo-EM. I hope uh, this has kind of made it clear how we can use cryo-EM uh, to do a 3D reconstruction. And thanks for watching guys, uh, hope you have a good day.